This time around we want to have a look at how to manipulate nodes in the node graph, how to position nodes, how to access nodes, and how to manipulate the node graph itself through Python. So let's have a look at that. Um, first of all I'm going to create something for us to play with. I'll just create a uh, no-up node and I'm going to create it in the x and y position 0. So I'll go x plus equals 0 and y plus equals 0. So you can see x plus and y plus are simply hidden knobs of a node and you can use any knob methods on them just like everything else. So to remind myself I'm going to give that a label called 0, 0. Uh, select that line and run that will give us a no up node in the node graph position 0, 0. So let's do that again for a second one called, uh, well first of all, n2 and that will live in x plus 200 and y plus 200 and the label should read exactly that. Okay, so let's run that and that will create a second no-op down here at 200, 200. So you can see the node graph's coordinate system is sort of upside down from what the viewer is, meaning that positive y values will position nodes further down in the node graph rather than further up. So now let's give ourselves another thing to play with. I'm going to call that variable marker and I will assign a dot node to it and that can create itself wherever it wants to. So that's over there now. To position nodes after they've been created we can use either their knob objects like so and set a new value for them. That will work just fine. However there are a few methods attached to node objects that will make that sort of thing a lot easier and that particular one is called simply set xpos. Actually with a capital X like so. And if we give that a new value and run that, it will work just as good except it's a lot less to type. So to position it in y, obviously we could do the same thing. Set y pos, run that again. However, there is yet another handy method and that is called set x, y pos. So we only have to do one command and we can assign an, a new x value and a new y value and run that all at once and that will position our node in both directions. Now if we wanted to assign a new position to line up that dot node to the right side of the no up 2 node, we'd have to find out what the no up 2 node's screen width is and that's pretty easy because there is a node method called screen width so we simply access that. I'll create a variable called width and that will hold the no up 2 node's screen width. And that will give me the node's width in pixels at zoom level 1. So now if I go marker set xpos, we'll just grab the current marker's position. So we'll go marker.xpos. So once again, there is a shortcut method to retrieve the x position of a node rather than having to go through the knob object. And we'll add the width, which is the no op node screen width and we run both lines here we'll now position the marker to the right side of it. Obviously the same works for the height and screen height and set y pos and so on. So if I keep adding the screen width to the marker's current position we'll just keep moving it over to the right more and more. Now let's have a quick look at how to control the node graph itself and that is pretty much one method called nuke.zoom. If you just run it without any arguments, it will simply return the current zoom level of the DAG. So if we bump that up, we will zoom in. If we lower that, go below one, we'll zoom out. And if we give it another argument, which is a tuple or a list, of x and y positions we'll define its center point. So if I want to zoom around that marker node that is now living way over here, I can simply go marker.xpos and marker.ypos. And that set has to be either a, a tuple or a list, so I, I'm putting it into parentheses and uh, running that line will 
center the marker and zoom to a zoom level of 0.5 so if we bump that up to a level of 3 we'll zoom into that marker and one last thing about the nuke.zoom command if you only run it with one argument and that argument is either 0 or negative then you're basically performing a zoom to fit which is kinda handy so now let's just clean up after ourselves using nuke delete and nuke.allNodes will give us a list of all the nodes on root level so we'll loop through them and as we go we will use nuke.delete to delete every single node on root level like so and that cleans up the node graph now that was all a bit dry and boring so let's have some fun with this <laughs> But you can actually do something useful with all of this as well. So let's have a look at something more practical. I've got a little function here called scale nodes, which takes a single argument, which is a, a scale factor. So I'll put 1.2 as in 120%. And the function operates on a selection of nodes. So I'll select a bunch of nodes here and then run that function on it. And you see it'll scale the nodes outwards from their common center. Or if the scale factor is smaller than one, it will make them move towards each other. So that's actually quite handy in production to clean up your scripts or to give yourself a bit more room when you find yourself in need of space. So let's have a look at how this script is put together. It's actually nothing more than that. So let's go through it. First of all we de determine the current node selection which gives us a list of all the selected nodes. We then grab the amount as in how many nodes are selected if nothing is selected we just quit so we don't do anything otherwise we'll proceed and initialize two variables called all x and all y to then hold all the nodes x and y positions collectively so we loop through the nodes and we gather and add as we go all the x and y positions once we've got that we can then divide the result by the amount of nodes we have to find the common center point in X and Y. Once we've got the center point we can then loop through all the nodes again to reassign their node positions as a result of the common center and each node's distance to that center which this alone wouldn't change anything in the script because every node would stay exactly where it was except we are multiplying by the scale factor that you can feed into this function and that will allow us to scale the nodes as we just saw. So you see this is really quite handy and there's a whole lot of other things you can do like aligning nodes horizontally and vertically or mirroring the whole node graph if you like and all of this is simply based on finding and setting node positions.